What I thought would be interesting to do was now that we are kind of uh, affixed in six railroads in, North, in, in the U.S. and Canada and Mexico, although they're, uh, we'll look at the, end, the history of the, end, the National of New Mexico, too, because that's been split up and, and reformed. All right, and, and I'll explain why I chose uh, 1950. 1950 was the, obviously the middle of the century. We were all babies or very small. And um, it, was the, it was the peak of steam. Most of you were babies. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, you were still a... a uh, I was uh, not. Whatever. Blink in your old man's eye. That's, that's, yeah. what was, that's, yeah. that's, that's what I was looking for. Um, <laughs> anyway, that it, it, um, um, we've been talking about steam for, for quite a few uh, times now. And uh, so this was the peak of the steam diesel transition. And as you'll see about the railroads, that was about when uh, overall the railroads in the United States and Canada were about half steam and half diesel about this time, about 1950. Uh, it was also the first regular year after World War II, because of course during World War II, they didn't didn't do like they did in World War I, where they, they actually, the government took over the railroads, but they were controlling things pretty well. They they said that uh, Baldwin and, and Alco could only build switch engines and uh, uh, General Motors, because they had a good product with the FT and the uh, e, E3. They said, you, you're going to build, you're not going to build any switches. You're going to build freight engines and, and passenger. And, and so they were controlling things to a certain extent. And, 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 uh, and 1950, everything was kind of back to normal. It also was uh, before the next round of mergers. Uh, things were sort of kind of in stasis, if you will, for a time. Uh, because the only merger recent before 1950, recently, uh, before 1950, was the Gulf Mobile in Ohio took over the Alton and Southern. That was it. But everything else was kind of uh, uh, steady for a while. And then, and then, of course, they started again. Now, 2020, uh, it's now. And the reason we're looking at this, it's after the final round of mergers. And I say final because the Surface Transportation Board has said this is it. Uh, six railroads in the U.S. is fine. No more, no less. Now, if you read the, there was an, uh, one of the Icono class in, in Trains Magazine a month ago, he said, oh, well, they need to have transcontinental railroads the way they do trucking companies and stuff like that. Now, this last month, then he, he kind of turned around and said, well, mergers aren't very good. <laughs> so I have no idea where he's coming from. But, but anyway, that doesn't matter because the Surface Transportation Board has said this is it. Because if there was any more mergers, then pretty soon we're going to be down to two railroads. And that's just, that isn't going to work. That's just, they're too big. The organizations become unwieldy. Um, so as, in terms of statistics to see how big the railroads were, we're going to look at route miles, operating revenue, uh, revenue ton miles, because those can be different. And we'll, I, we'll look at steam locomotives and diesels because uh, to see how they how the railroads were faring in, in, um, in, in eliminating their steam engines total locomotives, obviously, freight cars and passenger cars. So that kind of gives us an idea so we can compare the size of the railroads in 1950 and, and today. So first one, alphabetically, is the Burlington Northern Santa Fe. So we're going to look at that. And we're going to look in a little bit more detail at the components that were there in 1950. The Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe, the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy, the Great Northern, Northern Pacific, the Frisco, and the SPNS. Um, and we'll also take a quick peek at the, at the BN in, in um, 1970, because that was when it was first formed. As I understand, Jim Hill tried to do it back in 1896, but, but the, uh, he just couldn't get it done. And then actually he created this Northern Trust and President uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, actually broke up the trust. So they had to be separate. But for years, the, the uh, Northern Pacific and the Great Northern each owned the Burlington. And the uh, when when BN headquarters was in St. Paul, the NP and the GN offices were on the same floor in the same building. There was a wall between their computer departments and they had identical computer systems. Oh, really? Interesting. Yep. So all they did at the time the merger was just open up the wall. Yeah. Yeah. They had <laughs> they had two buildings back to back. It was 
<laughs> it was really funny. So uh, I forget it's on Fourth Street or something like that. Half of half the block was B, uh, was Great Northern. Half of it was NP. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Now we'll we'll look at some statistics and try to keep things in perspective. But just to see the sizes, I was kind of surprised. Uh, how much bigger the Santa Fe was than than the Great Northern NP stuff like that. I mean, it it was uh, thirteen thousand root miles, whereas the uh, the Burlington, the Great Northern, and the Santa Fe were, or the excuse me, the Northern Pacific were all about eight thousand, seven thousand for the for the NP. But but it was it was quite a bit bigger. Now, in terms of nineteen fifty in nineteen fifty dollars, their revenue was uh, five hundred twenty two million for the Santa Fe. Burlington was about half that. Great Northern's about half that. Northern Pacific was a little smaller, and the uh, and the Frisco was uh, smaller yet. Um, and in if you inflate those nineteen fifty dollars to twenty twenty two, you see the Santa Fe would be about six billion dollars today, assuming nothing else changed. You just inflated their income. Uh, Burlington would be about uh, three billion. Uh, Great Northern's about two and a half. Northern Pacific's two billion, and and so that kind of gives you a, a relative size of the different railroad um, railroads. Now, in terms of uh, millions of ton miles, or you can think about billions of ton miles. It's a, a ton mile is a is a railroad hauls a ton one mile. So uh, the Santa Fe had twenty nine thousand million ton miles, or twenty nine billion ton miles. Burlington seventeen billion. Um, CNS was two, uh, 2 billion, Great Northern 16 billion. So it's about the same size as the Burlington. Northern Pacific is a little smaller, 11 and Frisco. And then the SBNS was quite small. Um, in terms of the size of their rolling stock fleets, <laughs> the, um, uh, Santa Fe had a thousand steam engines still and 967 diesel. So they're, they're kind of half and half, half diesels, half steam. And they had 35,000 passenger cars and 1,400, uh, or excuse me, freight, 35,000 freight cars and four, 1,400 passenger cars. The Q had 657 steam engines, 448 diesels, about 1,000 locomotives total, and 43,000. So they had more cars than the Santa Fe, um, but uh, and uh, in freight cars. The, uh, they still had a lot of passenger cars. They still had a lot of passenger trains. Uh, CNS is a subsidiary. Uh, Great Northern had uh, 568 steam engines, 424 diesels. So they were a little more than half and half. They were moving right along, 992 um, locomotives, 38,000 um, freight cars, and 822 passenger cars. The NP had 661 um steam engines and 200 diesel. So the NP was always much more conservative financially than the Great Northern. Great Northern was a little bit more razzle dazzle and marketing and, and everything. The NP was pretty, pretty uh, um, staid and, and conservative. And uh, um, as, as you saw it, when they first came out with a streamlined passenger train, they had this very modest, dark paint scheme. And they realized the Great Northern was just um, they came out with the Empire Builder. It was orange and green, and it was faster. And so the NP had to do a, um, a kind of a, a rethink. And they actually hired Raymond Lloyd to come up with that that beautiful uh, green and green and white paint scheme, which many people consider probably the finest paint scheme of the of the period. Um, and so and thirty seven thousand. So they had about the same number of, of freight cars. As the, as the Great Northern, and but half of half as many passenger cars. They just didn't have as many passenger trains. And then the Frisco was was smaller, and that'll come along later. 